Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. In case you couldn't tell from my scale projects, I love deltas. And I've been eyeing the Freewing Mirage 2000 for quite some time. Ended up receiving one for Christmas, which was an awesome Christmas gift. And so, finally getting to put it together and I actually have a plan for this airplane. Now, I can't leave well enough alone. I always love to, to put my own spin on things and I actually intend to uh, convert this Mirage into a kefir. Now my plan is to incorporate uh, some 3D printed parts turn this thing into a kefir. Uh, you'd be surprised in terms of the shape, the airframe commonality, uh, you can get a pretty nice representation of a kefir from a Mirage 2000, but it's going to take a little bit of work. First things first though, we're going to put this together and I'm going to fly it stock and just have some fun with it. And then from there, we're going to convert this into a kefir. So with that said, let's get into putting this airplane together and we'll report back to you, let you know how it goes. And then from there, we'll take it out to the field and give you a flight report. We've assembled the airplane, it assembles super fast, parts count is really low, so all you have to do is install some wings, you install a dorsal, and it's pretty much there. The main retracts, you do have to install those, they come separately, but you know, five minutes and they're in, it's done. The fuselage does come in two pieces, so you have to glue the back end on to the, the main fuselage, the dorsal screws into place. I did have to strong arm the wings into place a little bit, it wasn't a big deal, I just had to kind of press them on a little bit harder than I expected to was all. Now in terms of the finish, you get a really nicely finished airplane. The colors are really good, they're accurate, and they use water slide decals for all of the markings which look really nice, they're really nicely done. It is EPO so you are going to get some texture, but that's just what we have to live with when you're dealing with EPO airplanes. We will refinish the airplane once we get to our computer conversion and you know that'll all go away, but that being said, it's really not that bad. The bigger issue was that I had an issue with one of the Elevon servos. I was getting differential as I was setting up the radio and it, the one servo just seemed to be really be struggling. So I emailed Motion RC. They were cool enough to send me a replacement. Unfortunately, it wasn't the exact same servo. It was a nylon geared servo versus a metal geared servo, which comes in the airplane. So. I ended up putting that nylon geared servo that they sent me into the rudder and I pulled the rudder servo out, put it into the Elevon I was having trouble with and that solved the issue. I did have to clear away some foam material from the hinges uh, to help alleviate some interference. The fact that I had to clear away that material that told me that yeah, the servos might be a little marginal here uh, and ultimately when I flew the airplane kind of found out that they, they really are. They do work but I didn't find the airplane super crisp or responsive using the stock servos, so I ended up replacing them uh, with Airtronics 94809 servos, and the airplane got super crisp in the response and when I flew it once I changed to those servos. Uh, so I highly recommend swapping them out. I've got a link to those on my blog article at thercgeek.com, and they are literally a drop-in fit. You have to grind away a small little tab in the plastic mount, but otherwise they slip right into place. And they provide crisp control. They've got a lot more torque than the stock servos, so you get a much better response and much more accurate control throw from the servos. Now in terms of the CG location, I found that the CG in the manual is decent. You can start there. I literally shoehorned 5800 milliamp hour packs in there. Uh, they're the Zippy 5800 6S and I had to do some modification to get them in there. I had to push them back as far as I could to get the CG where it needed to be. To get those batteries in there, 
I had to clear away some material from the inner walls uh, between the inlets so I could push the battery back as far as I could. It ended up being a fairly simple modification to do. Uh, and I'm really happy using the 5800s because I get killer flight times with the airplane. I fell out to about a quarter inch in front of the CG that's in the manual, but that ended up feeling quite good in the air, so I didn't worry about trying to get the battery any further back than that. Now, in terms of the control deflections, the deflections in the manual are good for the elevator deflection and not so much for aileron. We've got a delta wing. There's not a lot of wingspan here that you have to overcome, so you don't need very much roll deflection to get a nice crisp roll from a delta winged airplane. What I converged on in terms of the control deflections, I'm using about 5 8 inch for the elevator travel up and down, and I'm only using about a quarter inch of aileron travel. That's all that it needs. Now, some of you guys might want to tone that up a little bit. It doesn't give me a super fast roll rate when I go max deflection, but it's you know what I want in terms of the feel. I know some of you guys like it a little bit more responsive in roll. But that being said, if you set it up to the max deflection that they have in the manual, man, you are gonna have an airplane that rolls like a drill bit. So good luck with that one. Uh, so just know that you guys, you can tone it down and um, you don't always have to use exponential to do that. Sometimes it's much better to just reduce the endpoint adjustment so you can reduce that maximum throw. Regarding Expo, I'm not normally an Expo guy, but I did add just a little bit of Expo uh, to tone down the centering on the elevator. It was only about eight to 10%. Again, I'm not a big Expo guy. I don't use Expo really at all, but I did find it a little helpful for this airplane because it's small, it's fast, and so you can very easily over control the airplane if you don't have it set up right. So keep that in mind. In terms of flying the airplane, this little guy is a hot rod. It's got tons of thrust. You can go vertical from takeoff. It's got really good speed. So it's a whole lot of fun to fly. You can do any maneuver that you can throw at the airplane and it handles it like a champ. You can fly it just like the full size in a jet-like manner and it doesn't have any issues performing any of those maneuvers. Don't think you're gonna knife edge Delta. They don't knife edge too well. <laughs> I do recommend flying with the tanks on. It does help with the visual reference and you know, it looks cool even though the tanks are indeed a bit huge. So let's give you guys an idea of how this airplane flies. You can click here if you wanna see the full uncut video. Uh, otherwise, here's just a, a sneak peek at that and then we'll wrap this up. So at the end of the day, what you get with the Mirage 2000 is really an excellent value. It's $300. It's a, a fun flying airplane. You can do a lot with it. It's got great performance. I wish that I could say that no aircraft were harmed in the making of this video. However, as I was trying to get pictures and videos, I kind of tied the record for the world's lowest pass. It's a record you can only tie because you can't go any lower. I ended up scraping the runway, coming to a full stop on a low pass. 
pulled the tanks off. There's photo evidence, as you can see. Uh, it actually was quite funny. And the airplane, pretty much unscathed, with the exception of having ground down the bottom of the airplane a bit. Otherwise, I had flew the airplane three additional times that day and didn't have any issues. <laughs> so, when you guys are out there flying, doing those low passes, remember to leave some room between the airplane and the runway. Don't do this at home. So there we have it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I'm having a bunch of fun with the Mirage 2000 and hopefully you guys that have them out there are also. And from here, we'll end up going into our Kefir conversion videos. I plan to do some 3D printing with that. Uh, so it's gonna take a little bit of time to start doing the modeling, but we'll cover some of that in the videos in the progression as we go. So uh, be sure to subscribe to get those when they're posted. And also I've got a full article on my blog TheRCGeek.com. You can click here uh, to go to that. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you at the field. So I found this power system called Jock Hammer, something like that. I don't know. Check it out. Oh. <laughs>